We're going to have our next presenter, uh, and uh, it's my pleasure to present Mark Buckner, and Mark will be uh, talking about the Virtual Worlds Lab in Second Life. So um, you Second Lifers, here's something that uh, you'll be able to visit. Mark. Thanks, Mace, and uh, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Um, things were going well, and then we moved them over, started plugging things in and unplugging things, and uh, we had some problems. So keep your fingers crossed. Um, welcome everyone from Second Life. Welcome everyone here. What I'd like to talk about is something um, that exists in the real life and exists in Second Life as well, and that's uh, a laboratory that we constructed a few years ago. Um, I happened to be at the, either at the wrong place at the wrong time or at the right place at the right time, depending upon your, your point of view, uh, in my chair's office. And we had come up with an idea to create a gaming lab. Uh, it was a small idea at the time to have a room with some consoles that the students can relax. And then over time, the idea expanded and the amount of money that the university uh, decided to invest expanded as well. In the end, the university uh, made a total investment of about $500,000, about $400,000 for hardware and software, uh, and about $100,000 for infrastructure. And what I'd like to do is to describe the actual real life laboratory to you, and if the technology goes well, um, show you a movie uh, that I captured this morning with a webcam. So um, it's, it's low resolution, but it'll give you an idea about what it's, what it's like, uh, discuss some pictures, and then we'll take a look in Second Life at the laboratory that was constructed over the summer, funded by Wendy and Lev's group, and um, that we worked on with a couple of students and myself. So, uh, of course, in the front, uh, on the left, I, it was hard not to have a picture of Halo 3 in it, and on the right is probably my own particular um, uh, joy when I'm dealing with uh, gaming and simulation, and of course, that's Microsoft Flight Simulator. The, the motivation for doing this um, is, really comes from looking at the gaming industry, uh, representing an enormous market, um, over $10 billion a year, uh, and, and actually, I think as of last year, larger than the film industry. Uh, and it's an incredibly large market, not only for money people are pouring into this, but for our students uh, as well. And students enjoy it um, and seek after it, partly because they've loved playing games their, their whole life, uh, partly because they want to become part of the gaming industry, um, and also because it, it's simply enjoyable to play and also to create and invent and, um, these, these wonderful things which we call games that bring together so many disciplines and so many different cultures together into one project. Um, these disciplines are quite diverse, uh, bringing together music, bringing together art, bringing together English, bringing together computer engineering, computer science, and so on. But even in the more local area within our department, the, uh, the games bring together a wide variety of, of technologies and a wide variety of disciplines. Uh, some of the partners that we have are the ECS department here, um, Cleveland Institute of Art, Communication Sciences Department, School of Medicine, Nursing, and Cleveland Institute of Music. We have and use the laboratory in a variety of ways. One is simply for, as Lev put it, in the context of experiential learning, a way to get away from the uh, classroom environment where the professor is lecturing and the students are sitting in the, in the chairs. Um, my students don't always hang, hold up signs, uh, as in Lev's movie, but, but I really liked that movie and it was quite thought provoking. Um, but we also have three courses that are specifically in the gaming area, a freshman course, so students who are interested in this can jump right into it. Uh, a senior course that's taught jointly with the Cleveland Institute of Art, Cleveland Institute of Music, um, and an introduct and a kind of mid-level course that we're creating. But the laboratory is also used in a variety of other courses, such as AI courses, networks courses, graphics courses, as a, as a place for students can do homework and, and really have a good time and enjoy the homework they're doing. 
It provides research opportunities both at the undergraduate and graduate level. In fact, when freshmen come in and they have an idea, something that they want to do, we open them, we welcome them with open arms and, and encourage them as much as possible. I have some pictures here, and these are kind of play in the play it safe uh, realm. Um, and we'll go from pictures to, uh, to video to online and, and, and hope that the technology takes us all the way. This is pretty much the lab as you walk in. We have 18 Alienware computers there with a large uh, Dell monitors, um, large screens, good amount of real estate. We also have game consoles. We have four Xboxes, um, uh, four Xbox 360s, four PS2s, four Wii's, and two PS3s in the lab. And that the, the reason why I pointed that out separately is that this is a picture of the console room. It's rather dark. This is its usual state. Um, the projectors project across the wall onto an alabaster painted, um, uh, not even, I wouldn't even call it a screen, but an alabaster painted wall. And on the left hand, no, I don't want to install uh, that update for Xbox 360 controllers. <laughs> Microsoft is a way of reminding you about their things all the time. Um, and on the left, you can see the red chairs where students sit. Uh, and this is this pretty popular room that people, the students can access the lab on a 24-7 basis and people are, students are here to all hours of the night. We have LAN parties and it's quite loud and quite exciting. We have a, a music room or an audio room. Um, we have a variety of, of instruments and it's for creating sounds, for recording sounds, for creating music, recording music and bringing these together um, for games or sometimes the students are just interested in the uh, music for the sake of, of music alone. We, uh, we also have a video equipment in here which hopefully you'll see. We have a virtual reality room, we have virtual reality equipment including heads up displays, data gloves, We've got three haptic interfaces. We've got tracking devices. On the lower left, there are three degree of freedom tracking devices, so you can wear it in your head. And, and if you're looking, if you're looking at, through a heads-up display, your, the camera angle can follow along with, um, with your head movement. And we have the Liberty Polemus unit, which is a six degree of freedom tracker as well. We have one room uh, which is very difficult to capture uh, in stills, and that has a Barco 3D uh, stereo projector in it. Um, and the picture on the left is, is an accurate one. Um, this is the lab as you walk in, in, in or as you approach the lab in, in real life. Um, there's a glass door on the right. You can kind of see into the lab uh, through the glass door. On the left, we have a couple of monitors. So let's try this for the first experiment. Um, This is my attempt at walking around with this computer and the webcam. Um, so it's not going to be highly detailed, but it'll give you some feeling. Oh. Okay. And this is walking around, and it seems a little jerky. I'm not quite sure why. But these are the uh, Alienware Aurora 7500 uh, uh, computers that we have. And I'm going to kind of trace. Uh, a tour that we'll be taking in Second Life as we, as we move along. So I'm walking along here and the students sort of think I'm half crazy that we're sitting there in the, in the lab. You go along the, the main area, we'll make a right hand turn here into the console room, uh, looking at the last row of uh, computers and printers for just a second. That's the alabaster wall. Uh, it was a low light situation. That's a sign that says, please do not eat or drink. Um, but in the virtual world of Second Life, uh, you are permitted to, uh, to eat and drink in the lab to your heart's content. That's one of the stations that has an Xbox 360. You could see the Wii. That's a Sony short throw projector uh, that uh, projects across the, the, onto the alabaster wall. That's looking down the corridor of the console room uh, with the four stations, the four Sony short throw projectors. Um, and you can see the red chairs that we'll, we'll highlight in just a second. On the left, we're coming up to a monitor, uh, which is driven by that Xbox on the, lower, on the lower left. 
and which is not well lit, but uh, normally has uh, student programs that are on there, um, other video that's being uh, put onto there. That's our immersion room. Um, the Barco projector on the top, uh, the very large screen across. The, there's a single uh, Alienware system over here in an Xbox 360, and then a Lazy Bear, Lazy Bear, Lazy Boy <laughs> uh, uh, matinee chair. Uh, single seat, very comfortable. We'll move out of here uh, to the room to the left. The, oh, that's a Yamaha uh, surround sound system that's sitting there. And I'm pointing these things out because they'll be in Second Life as we, when, we, when we get there sh uh, shortly. I wonder if I can move ahead easily here. Okay, that's moving out of the room and all second it goes smoothly for some reason. That's coming into our audio room. Uh, that's the video uh, workstation on the left right over there, Acor Mac. Uh, and then one of the audio stations, you can see the 25 key audio, M audio keyboard. Um, as we get closer, we have the Roland hand drum on the right, right over there. And on the left, an 88 key M audio keyboard. There's a surround sound system in that room as well. Kind of move quickly here. And then the last room is our virtual reality room where we have uh, the haptic devices. You can see one, uh, the white uh, haptic device there. Um, and there's a heads up display and one of the trackers. Uh, and then to the far end, there's a, um, uh, some data gloves. That's part of the Polymus uh, Six Degree of Freedom system. And then the last uh, workstation over there with two uh, haptic interfaces and the Polymus uh, system. Okay, so that's the, the lab in, in real life. And if we can go back to this for just a second. That's the entrance to the lab in Second Life. The actual entrance is a little bit different. We went with a, a glass door uh, for, for both. And, um, and so let's, let's actually try and go into Second Life here and see what happens. Okay. Um, this is the Calvin Smith Library uh, on the Cleveland Plus Island, and let me walk in here. We'll try and do this in, in real time here. As we walk in, there's a little uh, kiosk, and what I'll do, there's a little, uh, the Second Life Lab, Virtual Lab, is up on the second floor here, and I got a quick little teleport to it. Just makes it a, a, a lot easier. So there we are in uh, Second Life, and, and we can go inside. You'll notice the little cubes uh, over here that are floating, have the Virtual World logo on it. Uh, pressing on that, you'll get a, a note card describing the laboratory, contact information, uh, and so on. We'll walk in here, and it'll look, it should look familiar to you. <laughs> You've seen that, that image before. Uh, there we have the 18 Alienware uh, computers. Um, we'll, on the right there in front of us is a tour car. We'll take a tour of that in, in just a moment. Uh, the artwork on the, on the lab there is, is not the artwork that we have in the real lab. And I actually, it's very disconcerting to be playing around in Second Life and then go down, in, and, go down and go into Second Life and see it. I sometimes don't remember what's real and what's virtual. Um, uh, the monitors themselves for the Alienware systems are interactive. There are URLs which you can click on that will take you to different places in Second Life associated with, uh, with, with gaming. And let's just walk this uh, first and, and kind of replicate what we're doing, what we've done in, in real life. And, but I didn't walk into a wall, okay? And there, and there we have the console room, uh, and you can see the red chairs that, that have been fairly faithfully reproduced, uh, the Sony short throw projectors, and we've actually taken texturing from actual images, and there we have the uh, consoles. There's, you can see the Wii and the Xbox 360, a Sony amplifier below it. We move ahead, and I think the... Uh, students uh, did a particularly good job in capturing this. There's the monitor, uh, and the images in the monitor change uh, over time. And there's a little corner in there in the bottom right-hand corner. You can see the Xbox 360. We can go into the immersion room, 
And there's a fairly good uh, capturing of that room. We have the Alienware systems, we have the Barco projector, the Lazy Boy matinee chair, and I don't know if the audio is, let me see. We'll see if the audio is coming through here. I don't hear it. And you can see if you uh, caught Jimi Hendrix there. Can you hear that at all? I'm hearing something, but I'm not quite, <laughs> I hear things all the time. Um, but you can see that we try to capture the notion of a 3D image by having these planes actually come outside of the, of the screen. And there we have the um, uh, Yamaha 800 watt surround sound system on the right. Whoop, almost got hit in the head. Does a fairly good job of recreating what the, the room looks like. This is the audio room. And the Fender Stratocaster is there. Uh, we have the keyboards. Uh, you can see the music uh, staff in the background animated. And if you actually click on the, um, the keyboards, it'll bring up different, different songs um, that, that can be played to add a little bit, of, uh, little bit of interest and excitement in the room. We put up some posters. Uh, I, I uh, requested the Jimi Hendrix myself, being an old Hendrix fan. <laughs> I said, that's the one I want. You can put up other ones. And then finally, the virtual reality room is the room here. And you, you, if you recall the room, we don't have these columns on which uh, sit these uh, devices. But if you click on one of these, then you get a, a card describing it, and a larger image of that appears. So here we have the heads-up display. Here we have the, one of the trackers. Um, and, oh, oh, didn't want to do that. And here we have the Plemus, the Plemus uh, Six Degree of Freedom Tracker, haptic uh, devices over here. So it does a pretty good job of capturing. You know, I'm going to take this out. Okay. And let's go outside and take the uh, tour. And okay, and then we'll take the tour uh, in English. And as we go along, and this may, I'm going to try doing this in mouse look over here. Uh, you can see uh, the guy's car is whispering, um, and what is basically going on is talking about the the lab and many of the different items that I just uh, talked about. And then the tour will uh, start. Hopefully, there we go. And that will continue as we move ahead through the, um, the PC room. And of course, it's slowed down a little bit, so some of the information can come at, at a reasonable rate. We'll go into the console room. And I'm in mouse look now, so I'm controlling what the, uh, what's happening. We'll then go into the immersion room. And then continue on with uh, the tour into the music room. A little bit of luck. into the music room. <laughs> and now it should feel comfortable to you uh, at this point. And uh, the last room will take us, last uh, portion of the tour will take us into the um, virtual reality room. Okay. So what we've done is try and recreate the, the uh, laboratory in Second Life. We've recreated it with a, a main purpose of allowing students um, who are thinking about coming here or anyone who wants to see what's going on in the lab uh, but can't come here physically to take a look at what's happening. I think it's a fairly good uh, recreation of it. Uh, it's not exactly like it, but even my son, who is very critical of these kinds of things uh, and who knows the laboratory, took uh, the, actually one of these tours um, and uh, just looked at me and said, Dad, that's pretty cool. 
And, <laughs> and I took that as uh, affirmation that, that we did a pretty decent job. So let me end there, uh, see if there are any questions or comments uh, from real life, from Second Life. Uh, I'll move around over here and see if anybody has actually joined me in the, uh, in the laboratory. Any comments, questions? Mark, do you want to um, share any thoughts about what, what happens next in the uh, Second Life environment or the, uh, in the campus physical environment? Boy, uh, <laughs> um, let's start with the Second Life. Um, what, what we would like to do here is to increase the degree of interactivity. Um, and in particular, it, it is a gaming lab. And, and ultimately, what I would like to do is to incorporate games inside the, the, the Second Life rendition of the, um, of, the, of the laboratory. And I think that's the main, the main thing. It's very difficult to, to, to give someone the sense of a haptic interface or touch or some of these other things that we've constructed. But I think games can be a part of, of the Second Life experience, and they are. Uh, many different games are available. So we'd like to, we'd like to do that. In, uh, in, the, in the real world, <laughs> in the real world, um, the, the, the laboratory is, is always in a state of evolution in the sense that gaming is um, an area where we need to be at, at the state of the art, at the state of the art in hardware and the state of the, so and the started state of the art in software. Um, and in, in other things that go around that in its, in its support. So we've started to implement uh, using Microsoft's XNA game uh, development environment, an ability for students to dual deploy to the PC and 360, Xbox 360 environment. And we'd like to expand that so that students either in my freshman course or in the senior course or anywhere uh, in between can develop their games, deploy them on both the Xbox 360 and on the PC and implement them right actually in the laboratory. Uh, they can do it now in a difficult way with some of the 360s that are in the console room but we would like to have 360s that are sitting on each one of these, these workstations. So those are the two, two areas. Yes, yes, hands being waved. Yes, we have some questions from Second Life. Okay. Um, LeDrew, and I don't want to try to pronounce the last name, excuse me, but um, what kind of degrees do you support? Is there a special degree in gaming design for computer-human interaction, computer interfaces? Uh, the, the primary degrees that we support are the more traditional ones in the electrical engineering computer science department, such as computer engineering, computer science, uh, electrical engineering, and systems and, and control. And, and those are the primary uh, ones. The, the degree that's closest to working in the laboratory that I find most of the students are, is in the computer science area followed by computer engineering. Uh, we, are, we do not have a gaming uh, computer gaming, video gaming uh, degree, uh, but we are looking and exploring and implementing a minor in, in that area within the context of computer engineering and, and, and or computer science. Uh, we also have these very close relationships with Cle Cleveland Institute of Art. So if you're taking a computer science degree, perhaps with a uh, computer gaming concentration, you can also take a good number of art courses from Cleveland Institute of Art or music courses, if that's your particular bent, for computer uh, for the Cleveland Institute of Music as well. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thanks for joining me, and thanks for joining me in Second Life. <laughs>